On the bus ride to prison, I sat by a little elderly man named Willie. Willie was there for drugs, but after a year in jail sober, it seemed his true self had returned, and that self was the epitome of wholesome. The kind of inmate who always tucks his shirt in, even when you didn't have to, just to be sure he didn't break a rule. Now, I had a lot on my mind as we rode to prison, but Willie only had one thing on his. Boy, I can't wait to get my hands on an ice-cold Pepsi when we get there. I wonder what the yard's gonna be like. Well, I don't know, but as long as they sell ice-cold Pepsis, I don't care. Unfortunately for Willie, we arrived just as the canteen was closed for the next two weeks due to inventory. The Pepsi would have to wait, but that didn't stop Willie from mentioning it every chance he could. Hey, Willie, how was your first day on the yard, man? Hey, it's okay. Not as good as the first day I get my hands on an ice-cold Pepsi will be. Yo, Willie. Hey, I heard they put you on that electrician job. Shit, that's pretty cool. You like it? Yeah, I like it, but it just gets so dad gum hot out there. Sure would like to come home to an ice cold Pepsi. I know, Willie. I know. Hell, we heard it so much it became an inside joke around the prison. I got a goddamn Pepsi. Pepsi, Pepsi, ice cold Pepsi. Pepsi. What the? F this went on daily until one day I realized I hadn't seen him all day. That was weird. So I asked a buddy, where's Willie at? And I learned something awful had happened. Now Willie's job meant he had to go around to many prisons and do maintenance on the electric fences. Sometimes that required him to be pretty high up in the air. Today, he accidentally touched the fence while the current was still going through it and took a whopping amount of volts and almost fell. Willie could have died. I dropped everything and ran to go check on him. I couldn't imagine how upset he probably was as I turned the corner but I was amazed at what I saw. It was Willie, sitting on his bunk, a bright blue Pepsi in hand, glistening in the sun from the condensation on the can. His eyes were closed as he took a long sip and lowered the can. Turns out, someone with a lot of food already stored up also heard what happened to Willie, and they stopped by his cell to give him some food and a whole 12 pack. In that moment, I had been having a hard week too, trying to adjust to my new life for what was gonna be nine more years. And I didn't know how I was ever going to get through it. But here was a guy who had had a much worse week than me, and all he needed was a Pepsi to be content in this moment. I realized maybe this place wouldn't be all bad, and I started appreciating the little things. So I took a sip. It was good and cold. Ice cold. Now, I wish I could end this story there, but unfortunately it is prison, and shit happens. I woke up the next morning and got word that somebody had stolen all of Willie's food, and his Pepsis. What happened after that? That's a whole nother story. So here was the nicest inmate you would probably ever meet, and someone had stolen all of his food and prized Pepsis right out of his locker. As I looked around his cell for any clues to who did this, Willie told me how his cellmate had gotten himself moved to a cell block on the other side of the hallway while he was at work this morning. He resembled a ginger Clint Eastwood, and if you watched my story of getting a prison nickname, you won't be surprised to know that since his name was Randy, and he also had a rat tail, we called him Randy Rat Tail. Now Willie's new cellmate had asked to take Randy's place because he wanted to get with some other fellas in this cell block to bust a window out. Now people commonly bust them out so they can go grab bundles of contraband that someone threw over the fence for them but they always choose other people's windows to bust because no matter who's behind it, the guy whose cell has the broken window always gets taken to solitary confinement. So they either pay someone to take the blame or they choose someone who's done something to make themselves a target. This new cellmate heard what happened and told us Randy Rattail had actually been spotted drinking cans of Pepsi by him and several others. So old Randy had escaped to another dorm and felt safe as though he had gotten away scot-free. He didn't know anyone knew it was him. But I did. Now I wasn't going to stab this guy because he took some Pepsi, but I was gonna hit him. Hit him one more time, Dub. And I was gonna hit him where it hurt. His goddamn rat tail. He'd be nothing without it. So I made some wanted posters with an irresistible reward and snuck across the hall after breakfast one morning to put them up. Ten of them? Tell you, I'm about to get that. No, you now, ain't. We'll see. We'll see. Them honey buns, they're mine. Not if they're mine first. Watch. Needless to say, the posters actually worked much better than I ever expected them to. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. 
Come on, I won't let him hurt you. Ironically, the hunt got so intense, Randy had to get himself transferred back over to our cell block. A few guys were negotiating a price to pay the guy next to me to let them bust his window out tonight and were interrupted by Randy holding his belongings and sleeping mat. Hey, uh, say fellas, any rooms open here? I smiled and spoke up. Uh, I think, matter of fact, that one, right there. That one's open. Oh, thanks. Mm-hmm. He went in and made up his bed, but it wasn't long before that same bed was unmade and sent along with him right to solitary confinement. As he sat on his new bunk, me and Willie stood in line. Canteen was open, and the Pepsis were fully stocked.